Hi folks, this is Dave Barrick speaking. I want to show you some of the tricks of the trade that I've learned and evolved over the last 15 or so years uh, working on the BPP code base. In particular, the way I actually do development as opposed to ways that you might think of. The first thing to say is, you know, debugging with printf's you know, only goes so far. At any rate, the state we have the VPP machine in here is that we've built up debug images and have the Debian packages ready to install. I want to take a look at the set of interfaces and we have essentially one ETH0 which is the uh, management NIC which we don't want to touch. ETH1 on the other hand uh, we very definitely do want to touch and what I'm going to do is to basically shut it off and kill the address on it. Uh, so the VPP can actually grab it. So simple, simple enough. I have turn it off. Get rid of the address on it, and now we're pretty well ready to uh, to rock and roll and start VPP working on it. So let's install the packages uh, again. Might as well do it the easy way and just install all of them. And there we go. If we were to say start, oh, ah, actually, now let's start doing some of the things the way I, I the way I really do them. Let me grab an Emacs here, which um, will allow us to edit. To be truthful about it, uh, when doing development, I I turn on the uh, the uh, Telnet console. Tradition says port 5002, but you can obviously start your own tradition if you like. So with that, ha with that having been done, what we can do is to say and then look at the debug console show interface and as you'll see that gigabit ethernet 080 um, is, is sitting there ready for us to configure. Now, a typical thing that I actually do at this point in the game is let's go make it obvious what the address we want to use is. We might as well just use the, 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 the one we previously got for that guy. So let's go in with, with, with Emacs again and X. Uh, make ourselves a setup script. Uh, Let me see. Of course, my memory isn't what it could have been some days. Um, I'll bet it's 080. Yeah. Okay. Now, if it turns out that isn't right, it won't matter. And I'll show you why. At any rate, here we are in the debug console. The thing to do is to actually leave here and stop stop the executable itself. And at this point in the game, we adjourn to uh, Emacs and start working there because that's that's really uh, the the most productive way to go. If we say here we are and we say meta x good GDB. Um, and we just start this guy under under GDB. Oh, guess what? Now we get to now we get to take a quick pause and install GDB. Well, that's none too hard. Let's go find the uh, find the find the world here and. Hopefully this won't prove too tiresome. Yeah. 
And obviously, this is what happens with real live demo as opposed to a canned one. So now that we've installed GDB, if we can find our Emacs window again. Um, and then at this point in the game, it should, oh, really? Okay. Ah, uh, okay. With GDB, you know, just typical stuff. Uh, slash. Okay. The idea is you actually need to feed it the the, the full path there, or that's about what you're going to get. Well, so far this has been a great sales job, but at any rate, now a couple things to say. One of which is that you want to uh, tell GDB not to bother about SIG user one. and to pass it on to the program itself. SIG user one is the shoulder tap that API clients give the vector engine when its main input queue transitions from empty to non-empty. So you don't really want you to be messing with it. It won't hurt anything. And there may be times where you'd want not to do that, but 97% of the time, that's actually what you want to do. And at this point, you want to start the, uh, the program itself with the basic orgs Unix interactive. Okay, and you'll get a certain amount of debug skew, and now you can do show interface. Here you are uh, typing at the debug console, and it was in fact 080. So if we go look at setup.nic, 080, yada, yada, yada. And now we can say actually EX. Um, all right, and I happen to know I put it in setup. Nick, and now uh, obviously the, the the Nicks come up. Um, an interesting detail here is that in Emacs, uh, you can of course edit the command lines uh, that, that you're typing into GDB when you're actually talking to the program's uh, console here. Uh, it's really quite convenient. Uh, another thing that's really quite convenient is if you were to say show int and then gig. Uh, if you type at this point escape slash in, in Emacs, you get a thing called hippie expand. I promise I didn't make the name up, but at any rate, it's good for doing uh, arbitrary string completions. If you type meta slash and you don't like the particular way it completed, you can type it again. But at any rate, that's a useful Emacs feature that I use constantly. At this point, you say show interface and it's actually getting some traffic. Show IP ARP. Well, not so much there. Um, Another thing to do here is just to make sure we can ping the host, which would be to say IP probe nay neighbor 172.128.1. Oh, yeah, uh, giga. Okay, show IP ARP, show IP fib. And you'll see, you know, there should be a, a, a slant 32 adjacency. And actually, let's see if we can widen this out just a least little bit. There should be a slant 32 adjacency 4.1. Yeah, right. And there you go. So that's all, you know, that's all well and good. Now, if on the other hand, you want to actually start debugging, you know, bits of code, on um, pretty reasonable thing to do would be to say uh, to stop here and say well where's the first place we're likely to do uh, we're likely to do anything if we look in the sources we'll see vnet vnet dpdk uh, vnet vnet devices dpdk node.c 
and we'll see pretty rapidly that um, Okay, DPDK device input is, at least in a single core configuration, the place to go when you want to see packets. So here we can say, roll down here, and we're just looking at the sources a bit, and we'll say, yeah, early frame, you know, early frame discard, not so much. At any rate, let's actually go, let's actually go set a breakpoint right here in the, uh, you know, a place that you only will get to when you actually have a packet to deal with. So if we say um, control X space in this thing, it'll set a breakpoint on the line that uh, the, the Emacs cursor is pointing at. And now we continue it and wow, there's a packet already. So this, you know, we just literally walk through it and say um, B0 Let's wait till it sets it up just a little bit. And you'll see, uh, let's see. A bunch of not very interesting to be truthful about it. you know, some buffer index, so on and so forth. But at any rate, you can uh, readily imagine um, what you might do there. Let's actually um, delete that breakpoint and set one. Um, all right. Now that's going to, you would think, uh, when the IP4 local stack gets a... Uh, uh, has a packet come in the back door, you would think that that would give you, uh, give you a hand. Now, if we were to remind ourselves over here of what the host IP address was, which is to say, I'm going to bet it was 172.mumble.3. All right. Well, at any rate. Show interface address will tell us the address we might want to ping from the host level, which I'm going to contrive to do. New window, small font, ping 172.28, 128.3. And then son of a gun if we're not sitting there in IP4 ICOMP echo request. Now obviously backtrace will tell you how you got there. And um, you type N, essentially, it's, you know, Emacs is a lot like an integrated development environment. Um, yeah, bumble, bumble, bumble. And now here we can say P star P zero. And this is a lot more, you know, a lot more reasonable looking. Um, to, to dump the, uh, the, the DMA buffer is actually pretty easy. P slash X, um, P's, uh, P0 pointing at data sub zero at, I'll just dump 64 octets and you should see one, two, actually let me do this for you. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's the desk Mac one, two, Six and then it's 0800. Aha, Ether type IP4 454. Um, a little birdie tells me that's an IP4 packet of length 54 hex. And if you look through this, you, you can if you look through the rest of the IP4 header there, you can convince yourself that it's actually about as advertised. Now, that's not necessarily the best thing to do. Notice IP0 there, P slash X star. IP0 will tell you. Okay, this is a this is a little more literal uh, literal literal dump of the IP4 header with a structure that does the right thing. Now, the source address is union so that it can be read in a couple of ways. One of them is, um, you know, is as a 32-bit quantity 
um, you know, mumbledy, mumbledy, mumbledy one. Well, if you, if you, a little bit of head scratching later, you'll realize that's the 172 address we were playing with. The desk, you know, in other words, it came from dot one, which is the host, and it's aimed at mumbledy, mumbledy, mumbledy dot three, which is the desk. At any rate, so you can, you know, you can really start poking around in the packet data pretty good that way. And another thing to say is that, um, at this point in the game, where is this packet going to go? Well, let's do a little bit of, oh, it thinks it's going to, what What this piece of code does is at the base of the IP local stack, and it's going to turn this guy into an ICOMP echo reply. So if we look here, here's the code actually doing it. You know, we're, we're, we flip around the source and desk the usual way, go fix the checksum, deal with the TTL for a moment. Um, this assert actually uh, is a kind of thing you'll end up wanting to do because ultimately a lot of particularly IP4 packet processing involves fixing headers, uh, you know, fixing header checksums. And if you don't get it right, um, incrementally, uh, the packet's not going to taste very good to whoever's uh, receiving it. So this is not a bad trick here, which is to say just to assert that the checksum that you made by incremental manipulation is actually the same checksum you get when you uh, compute the thing from scratch. Now, feel it put next frame, in other words, um, is going to push the packet forward in the graph and you p next zero. No, actually, uh, p next. Okay, next is index zero. Now to figure that one out, if we go look here, um, let's see, ah, there's pretty much only one place the guy's gonna go, which is IP4 rewrite local. Now, if you wanna catch it doing that, uh, B IP4 rewrite inline, I happen to know. I'm going to show you a trick in a couple of minutes how to go not have to know where everything goes or, uh, you know, know that by, as if by magic, if we type continue, the guy's going to be an IP4 rewrite inline, which is the thing that's going to go flip on the, uh, the header to send the ICOMP reply back where it needs to go. But at any rate, that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of a quick survey of, of using, um, you know, of using uh, Emacs and GDB on the sources. Now, when you want to actually start working on the sources, um, one of the things you can certainly do here is on, um, let's, let's just do something, let's just do something trivial, VPP, VNet, main.c. Um, one thing you can do here is, uh, you know, is if you actually change a file in this editor, noticing that this is a root editor, you can actually rewrite it that way. The one suggestion is don't compile it uh, as root. Flip back to, um, you know, flip back to a non-root window. Here we are in build root, and you say literally or make. Oh, we haven't actually done a make at all, so we say make platform equal VPP tag equal VPP under debug. V equals zero because we don't need the spew uh, VPP install and that'll rebuild the binary that we've been debugging and it's going to roll around and not do very much to be truthful about it. On our, I, I'm doing this on a laptop so that I can capture the video easily, but in uh, you know in real life this is just screamingly fast. Uh, you know if you use a reasonable computer. Uh, and not a laptop running Vagrant and so on and so forth. Ah, uh, ah, there's another little bug, which is that even on your laptop, you might want to just quit out of here to give the give the machine back, you know, back whatever limited amount of uh, goodness it actually has. Oh, uh, gosh, what did I do to it now? Um, right, here we go. At any rate, you know, now we've, we've just about ended up doing the load problem. And... You know, this is order of a few seconds on it on a real machine. At any rate, so now we've rebuilt the guy, and rather than do much of anything else, uh, we can just run it again. And notice it'll say uh, it'll complain some about uh, this and that uh, are changed. Notice it says VPP has changed rereading symbols. Well, that means we're debugging and running the new version. At this point in the game, using reverse search for rex slash. Um, okay, do my slash. Uh, 
drop down. All right. So now we're back, you know, now we're back, where, you know, where we wanted to be. That's actually uh, about what the, you know, compile link and go cycle looks like. Um, if you have breakpoints set and so on, Emacs and GDB conspire to get, uh, you know, to get everything just basically to work. So that, again, in a few seconds, you can go from, oh, I decided to change something, I changed something, I rebuilt the image, and I'm back, back in business. Notice that the 100,000 foot summary is you build uh, and install the Debian packages, fire them up just to make sure everything's kosher, then shut down the image, run in, uh, run GDB plus Emacs on the, uh, you know, on the, inst uh, the install directory version, and you can iterate at that level uh, very rapidly. It's quite a pleasant environment to work. So that's kind of the basic way I do it. <laughs>